Honeybee societies also have a public works division. You know, it's very similar, to, again, to, to human societies. And what, what do they get from their, in their public works? Well, one is they get thermal regulation. Uh, the bees will, will fan the nest to decrease the temperature. They'll bring water in and put the water strategically throughout the nest and then blow air over the water, which then acts like an evaporative cooler and will actually decrease the temperature. Even in Arizona, in the summertime, when it's 115 outside, it's 93 inside of the, inside of the hive because they're running their evaporative cooler to keep the brood uh, and the other bees uh, at a temperature that they can survive. Uh, they have housing construction. Um, they build these nests. They construct those combs. The combs become the social substrate for all the activities of the nest. Uh, and they build that. They provide it for everyone. They work together in a, in a communal effort to, uh, to provide housing. Um, they do refuse collection. The bees are constantly finding stuff that doesn't belong, hauling it out of the nest and getting rid of it. And they do home repair and maintenance. They're constantly involved in fixing cells, expanding cells, uh, patching cracks with propolis. So they're, they have a home repair and maintenance uh, section as well. Um, comb. Comb is fascinating material. This is what they use for their construction. So, so they're, you know, they're providing it themselves. They consume sugar. Um, in their honey, and then they convert that honey into wax. For one kilogram of wax, they have to consume uh, between six and nine kilograms of honey. Uh, one kilogram of wax will make about 77,000 cells, individual cells, and one kilogram of wax equals about 990,000 cells, uh, uh, I mean, excuse me, scales of wax that they produce. You can see here on the abdomen, uh, on the underside of the abdomen of this particular bee, she has these scales. They're produced in glands that are between those segments of her, of her abdomen. Um, she produces these while she hangs in festoons, such as this, and such as these down here. They're, they hang together and they eat honey, they get the sugar, and they convert it into, into wax. And then once they convert it into wax, then they remove them and they take them and they place them someplace in the nest is part of the construction project. Um, a typical nest has about 100,000 cells in it, so it's a big job. Uh, that's 1.3 kilograms of wax, uh, which me represents about 1.3 million wax scales. Um, it'll consist of eight parallel combs on average, constructed side by side, and it'll be contained in about a 42 liter volume of space. That's, that's sort of the average space that the bees will occupy. This is public works in action. You can see the bees here, they're, they're involved in, in, in constructing the cells. These are spare wax uh, scales that have been laid down. Here's some more wax that's been laid down. They're starting to build it. Some of them have their heads in cells, they're curing, they're curing um, uh, honey, they're taking nectar and converting it into honey. So this is your public works team that's out there. And, and, and all in all, in this team, there's uh, 10, 20,000 bees. They have a public welfare system. They provide housing, uh, child care, and a food co-op. They, they collect food, they bring it in, they, they, they store it in the nest. This is the storage of pollen in here, uh, honey. They store honey in the, in the, in the cells of the, of the nest. It takes about 55,000 miles of bee flight for one pound of honey. It's a huge effort, but it's a food co-op. They maintain it. Everybody uses it. They have a border control and immigration service. Um, the Entrance to the nest, as you can see here, uh, has all along it guard bees. This guard bees look typically like this. They're, you'll, you can detect them because they're sitting on the entrance in here, and they'll have their front legs off the substrate. Their back four legs will be on the substrate. Remember, they have six legs, they're insects. So they'll be kind of leaned up. They'll have their, 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 their front legs up. Their mandibles will be open like this. 
kind of looks threatening for us, but, but it, it, it's, that's an anthropomorphic way of viewing it. Um, but then as bees come in to the nest, uh, these bees will go over and they'll check them out. They'll antenate them, they'll make sure that they have the proper credentials to get past the border, to get into, into the nest. Colonies have a nest mate recognition system. They need to have a nest mate recognition system because other colonies of bees are, are kleptomaniacs. Uh, as soon as they detect that a colony is weakened uh, defensively, uh, they will invade that colony and they will steal its honey and they'll fly away with it. So colonies have to defend themselves against intruders. One way that they defend themselves against intruders is by being able to recognize who belongs there and who doesn't belong there. They rely on chemical cues that adhere to the cuticle or the body of the bee that tell them that this bee belongs here because this bee smells like we do. And if another bee comes in from another colony, the, the guard bees who stand vigilant at the entrance, they will detect that that bee doesn't belong there and they will respond by usually by tugging on them and pulling at them and pulling them away. But in, in more severe circumstances, they will actually sting the intruder to death. They really need to defend themselves at some times of the year more than others. Uh, during the spring, when there's a lot of nectar in the flowers and they're bringing the nectar home and they're storing it, bees tend not to rob each other because there's plenty of resource. They don't need to. So colonies lower their defensive scale. They go down to DEFCON 1 or whatever. And then as the season goes on and, and the resources become more scarce, their defensive level goes up and you'll find more guards at the entrance and they will be more critical on who they let in and who they don't let in. Guard bees are easily detected. When you look at the entrance, they're the bees that are sitting there on their back four hind legs. They have six legs all together. And their front legs are lifted off the substrate and their wings will be, will be separated up from their back. Normally, when you look at workers walking around in the nest, their wings are folded on top. The guard bees have them out. And their mandibles will be open. And you'll see them whenever a bee comes in, they run over and they use their antennae, they touch it. They're sampling their, their nest mate recognition cues, which are olfactory cues on the surface of their bodies. And then they will, if, if they don't belong, then they're stimulated to reject them. If they do belong, then they let them in. You can observe guard bees at the entrance. Um, if you look here, you'll see some bees that are sitting with that on their back legs or back pairs of legs. Here's another one here. Whenever individuals come in, they move towards them. They, they uh, antenate them. They uh, make sure that they belong. Uh, sometimes they'll even fly out and fly up and greet them. And there's one that just did it and dropped them to the ground. They then checks them out and turns them loose. Another social trait that bees have for defending their, their nest uh, is, we call it balling. That's when bees pack around something and they get really tight and they will suffocate the individual or overheat them to where they'll die. They do this with hornets that invade the nest. You can see here, they're, they're clustered around it, they're, they're packing in and, and, and they can suffocate it and kill it. This is what happens when a queen enters the wrong nest. So this was a queen that was out on a mating flight, came back, got to the wrong nest, tried to get in. The workers recognize she's not our queen. They defend against her, and they form this ball, which we call balling the queen. 